to be here. I'm really excited. I will say that my variety of topics is a bit meandering, so this may be a little free-form jazz, but that's okay. Um, basically, my idea, I think we're probably pretty familiar with Dream Studio, but I have a couple of images to do there, um, from prompts and from image to image, and then moving over into uh, NMKD, um, which is a, a local GUI kind of thing. So, all right, so my first kind of thought with this is, I don't know how many of you remember Dolly Mini. Uh, from, I guess, early this year or last year. I was obsessed. I made so much work with it, and it was all, in retrospect, very low res. Um, so I thought about bringing some of those images into Dream Studio and using a prompt that kind of described what I saw in it when I made it um, and kind of letting it interpret. So that's what I've started here with Dream Studio. So I've got this prompt here. It's a pretty simple one. Um, it's got a couple of public domain artist names here, and I wanted to recommend this website my cat may meow sorry um artv.com so you can see it a-r-t-v-e-e -E, has public domain classical art that you can search for i find a lot of movements and artists and terminologies there that i use in prompts which helps a whole lot there's a lot of different categories you can sort by super recommended i think it's awesome um so i've used that to come up with this little prompt here and then I'm going to add the image from Dolly Mini, which you can see on the right here is quite uh, low res and pixelated. Loved it at the time. So we have it here. And I've already got all the settings set up for it. So I'm just going to run it and see what we get. Which probably the most awkward part of the stream is going to be waiting for iterations. But yeah, so we can already see like <laughs> it's amazing how much the technology has progressed in just a little bit of time, right? Like, good grief. I'm just going to save that one for a memento. That'll be fun. I'm going to move along, though. That was just a, a demonstration. Um, and now we're going to do this one, which is another similar prompt. But it's coming from a piece that I made um, sort of digitally, sort of traditionally. It's like a hand-done piece, mm -hmm. I guess is what you call it. So I've got my little settings up from having tested it. So I'll go ahead and uh, put those in. So init of 50, 50% 50 image. Uh, what have we got? CFG 15 and 60 steps. Let's do that. CFG 15, 60 steps. Let it run. And the idea with this is once I pick an image from the four that pop up that we like. Yeah. Those are pretty cool. Let's try one more. Uh, I'm going to save it and then open it in NMKD with an embedding, uh, a concept, which is something that I'm really excited about. And I don't know how many of you know about concepts, but they're amazing. So save as, otherwise it saves to a wonky place. There. Cool. So that's already really awesome. So I'm going to pull up NMKD. And I already have my stuff in here. So we'll load the image, which is this one. And this thing here that says concept, clear concept, I've already got it in, Russian.bin. So this is uh, like a mini style model that someone has trained on Russian artists, which are super detailed and ornate, which is what I'm going for with this. So that's why I've chosen it. There are other ones with um, like acrylic pour paintings and abstracts, uh, black and white manga style stuff. There's all kinds of amazing stylistic things you can add to it. You can also train your own models, uh, the mini style models, as well as the large ones. But I will get into that later. Uh, I think this is all set up, so I'm just going to let it go see what happens. I think it's super cool that you can use your own art um, with Dream Studio and with this. I, I tried making just straight from my own art to this uh, interface, but for some reason, I think it's the clip uh, in Dream Studio. It makes a lot better results. Um, they're not all this slow with NMKD, but it has to load the model. There we go. So that's gorgeous already. I think there are three. 
That is phenomenal. God, wow. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> what an incredible workflow. Wow, this is so beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And I, I forgot to mention, there is some negative prompting here naked because we do not want Twitch to ban stability on the first big stream. Um, old because we use the term girl, so we wanted to make sure it understands. Um, ugly, which is subjective, of course, but whatever the AI thinks is not good uh, looking, we don't want to have in there. Don't want any text and then blur and fade i'm using a model so if you click on open settings and you go to these models here i'm using a model that is half analog diffusion which is a photography model and half 1.5 stability uh, 1.5 so it's a mix of two of them and this little wrench here you go to merge models any models that you have, once you've trained yourself, once you've downloaded, you can mix them together and you can slide this around to weight how much goes to, uh, to either model. So you can make custom models super easily that way, which I think is awesome too. Um, so yeah, those are <laughs> super cool. I love it. Um, so there's that. Now I think in the interest of time here, I'm just going to scoot along. Yeah. So I did have one other neat little thing here before moving into photography, which I'm so excited about, which is a pattern, uh, a pattern option that they have here for wallpapers or for uh, fabric, which is pretty amazing. 0.4 strength, 30 steps. My dog is whining at the door. Um, 18 CFG, which is here. How strongly it follows your prompt. 512 by 512 and PLMS for this one. I find that it's better at sort of cartoon anime type styles. So I'm going to upload the image, which is here. Vintage anime flowers. And actually, this is so pretty. I, I doubt the output will be as pretty as that one is because I haven't run it through Dream Studio first. But we're going to do it anyway. And I think 50 is what I had set it at. Oh, 30. We'll do it on 30. It's faster. OK. Oh, I messed up. Cancel. We want right here on the bottom, generate seamless tileable images. If you go to seamless on all sides, then it'll make something that is um, tileable. So again, wallpapers, fabrics, but you could also easily do textures. That did not turn out well. Clearly, I have a setting in the wrong place. But uh, trust me when I say it's very pretty when you have it on the right settings and you can uh, tile it. So even with the, OK, this one's not the worst I've ever seen. If you right click and you go to, oh man, is it post process? No. OK, well, you can right click and upscale, which will very quickly double it in resolution, which is great. You can also do facial restoration, which is awesome. But there's some way to. Oh, yeah, you click it and then you right click it. And then, yeah, you can see that uh, it makes seamless tiling, which would be great for 3D textures as well. I could definitely see a lot of uh, digital fashion benefiting from uh, stable diffusion with this setup. OK. Now I'm going to move on to what I'm super, super excited about, which is the photography model. So, OK, first thing we do is we switch models. I'm just going to do straight up analog diffusion. This is a photography model that I downloaded, so it's trained specifically on photographs. Secondary model, I'm going to use none. It makes it uh, a purer sort of just sticks to this analog kind of look. What is next on here? I've got the prompt. Yeah, I've had to learn a lot more about photography than I've ever known just to write the prompts. Because the more that you know about it, so volumetric lighting, uh, DSLR, lenses, 100 millimeter lens, depth of field, film grain, that kind of stuff all makes it have a, a better result. So the more you research and kind of keep a, a compendium, which I've started doing here, I've got patterns so I can use them when I want to change the look of abstracts or of clothing or whatever, use the word in the prompt. Um, and I've started doing that for lenses and things as well. Super helpful. Uh, and then the negative prompt is more extensive as it's having all kinds of 2D art involved in it um, so that we don't have anything but photography. It's like 12, 30, 18. So 12 CFG, 30 steps, and 18, or no. Yeah, DPM2++ is the sampler. These all give you different looks. You can play around with them. I'll put it back on single image, not tiling. And I think, I think that's all correct. What is the, oh, there's no initial image. Yeah, we don't want the flowers. There we go. And let's put it on 512 by 512. 
I think this is it. I think this is all we need. Do I have the concept still on? I don't think I do. No. Okay, so we remove the concept. Now we're good. This will take a minute to load the model, but it's pretty impressive, the fidelity of the images that it makes. And of course, sometimes you get some low-res, crappy-looking ones, especially further away. But close-up portraits are so gorgeous, it's crazy. And once it pops up in a minute here, it's loaded the model. I can explain what some of these terms are. Yeah, so like, this is already, I mean, remember the Dolly Mini images from a minute ago? Wild, the difference, right? Yeah, it's, uh, people are coming out with these all of the time. New models, uh, it's like popping up everywhere like wildflowers. Up here, this uh, test two that I have in brackets that pulls up an embedding concept that I've made. So basically what I did was I used this analog model to uh, make this image, which shows kind of its base style with my prompting. So this kind of prompt produces this kind of look. But you can use something called automatic 111 or 1111. Or you can use uh, Runway ML at this point, or there's Google Collabs as well. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Not to train a whole new model, but just to take a few images and within a few seconds make kind of a mini model, which is a concept, which is what I used here on uh, that last picture. So I trained my own concept. So this was what the prompt gave me was this kind of look. Took these five images that I had made with Dream Studio on the same kind of look and trained it for a few seconds, called it test two. And then what it produced when you mixed test two with that model here is these very stylized looks. You can see the color combinations, some of the dividing sort of geometries, and then the shapes of the hair are a really good giveaway as well. Um, you can tell it had an influence. So that is super, super neat. So that's what we have here. Um, and you can kind of ramp up the test by listing it again or by adding, uh, if you actually save it as a .bin file, you can load it as a concept and write it. And then it's like really, really, really strong. Um, but I haven't figured out how to convert my .pt files to bin yet. So I can't do that. I can only reference it there. Um, but yeah, let me run it again. And then I think... It looks like 18 CFG and 60 had some more good results. So I'll adjust that a little bit. And then if there are any questions, I'll grab those. And I've speed run, I didn't mean to, um, through this. Let's see, so I'll go up to 18. So the more that you slide the CFG, it really takes your embedded style that you list and is very strong with it. So you have to be careful um, and increase the steps or it'll get super artifacted and not good looking. So let's try it again. That one's not so great. <laughs> Happens. That one's much better. So yeah, there's a lot of really good outputs. There's a lot of pink hair, like you said, but these I are some that I made it. last night. Yeah. I love so, it. Yeah, thank you. I'm totally in love with it, too. I cannot stop. <laughs> if I tried, I could not stop. Um, but I wonder, and I, I don't have time to do it on stream, but after stream, I'll probably take one of these um, that's already very high fidelity and run it through this process again and see if it just kind of artifacts it out or if it makes it really, really high quality. Um, and I also would love to, I've tried loading this analog model into Deforum and it works. Um, I was able to make a photorealistic animation into Deforum, but it does have that kind of like jagged, jumpy sort of look because I don't like using the cadence uh, as higher. I, I like the one frame cadence. Um, but I imagine give it, I don't know, three months and mm -hmm. photorealistic video is going to be... Uh, <laughs> probably pretty ubiquitous so anyway there's my little presentation <laughs> where can we um, find the analog model that's on a couple of different places but it's probably is it on hugging face is that where you get it the, is uh, yeah. yeah it is on hugging face and i also should mention if you search for stable diffusion concepts library um, and add hugging face to the end on your google search it'll bring you to it's like a 700 800 uh, embedding 
concept, which is this load concept, like test two, the thing that makes this look, it's like 700 of them that people have made and uploaded for free. So you can either download them, which you have to be careful, scan, scan them for viruses, um, or you can use them in Hugging Face through kind of like a collab uh, interface, um, just to test them out and see what they would look like with your prompts without having to download anything. Uh, highly recommend that. It's a whole lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's a fine tune. The embedding, I think, is has how it's referred. I might be wrong. Uh, I want to train my own model as well, and I do. So up here at the top, this little face, you can train a Dream Booth model with this and MKD as well. Um, I don't have the virtual. I don't have the VRAM for it yet, even though I have a 3080. Um, so I'm going to look at some solutions for that. Um, but you can do it here. But there's also uh, Google Collab notebooks um, where you can run it that way to train your own model um, and kind of avoid some of the hardware requirements if you've got a pro subscription or a pro plus um, so i'm planning on training my whole my, my whole new model kind of thing in the same way that this analog is its own model someone trained it just on photographs i'd like to train it just on my work um, and see what happens because you know with ai everybody has tens of thousands of images just clogging up their hard drive you may as well train them into a model right so hopefully after christmas i'll have something to report there <laughs> so that's a local uh ui yeah that's, that's yeah. pretty great i'll have to it's run very that. user friendly i'm trying really hard to understand automatic 111 because it's 1111 because it's got so yep. many options but I'm, I'm feeling a little brainlet so this is very easy if you're just starting uh to figure out Train Dream Booth on 8 VRAM. I know that you can do that with transformers. Um, I've been trying to run through like the Git Bash console and install everything, and I, I'm just like so out of my depth, uh, but I'll get it eventually. But you can, if you don't have the hardware and you also don't want to pay for some of these subscription things, there are things you can download from GitHub that will help. It's just beyond my pay grade, so to speak, right now. I'll try some of these other samplers and see if there's uh, much difference. I'm sure there probably is, so that might be fun. Let's keep the steps low so we can actually get some uh, some looks here. The 12 might also try a concept. I have tried initialization images, but unless they are also photographs, um, it's not pretty. <laughs> oh, that one's nice. Um, That's great. But with photographs, it it does make some some good looking stuff. If you crank it all the way to like 20, 25 and manage not to lose all of the, uh, the resolution and the, if it doesn't artifact out, then it really shows the embedded stuff that you put in there. So test two in my case, that uh, sort of pink anime aesthetic, yeah, it really like pushes that, which is fun, but it often will glitch out a bit. So there's a question here from Crypto Notus. Uh, why using NMKD and not other versions of Stable Diffusion? What are the advantages besides the ones you show? Well, but I think it's worth just kind of revisiting what you were saying as to why. So because you started in Dream Studio and then you mm -hmm. came out and went through a couple of steps. And so the advantages, again, of NMKD have to do with working with. Uh, yeah. um, go ahead. Take it away. Well, so Dream Studio, I think, produces superior uh, work with the clip enabled um, in most cases, but you can't change out the models. So from the settings here, these two boxes, you can change out the models. Um, you can also use this wrench, hit merge models, and you can mix models together to use within an MKD. You can do the same thing in the automatic um, GUI I was telling you about. But again, it's it's a little complex for me right now. I'm still figuring it out. This one's very user friendly. Um, and then also the embedding of concepts. If I was sure that it would not have any nudity pull up, I would pull up the um, notebook, mm -hmm. the library that I was telling you about to show you there's like 800, just a massive library of concepts people have made and you can apply them, which is really cool. I will load a concept here while we're waiting, embeddings, and we'll do... Let's do this iridescent photo style, see what happens. So if you just put it in the concept, it'll apply it a little. But if you also type it in brackets, exactly as it is uh, there, it'll apply it much stronger. And at 20, this may make it not work very well, but we will see what happens. 
and it has to load the embedded concept so it takes a second longer um, than it would otherwise. But this will show you probably pretty subtly with this because it's an iridescent photo style. So this is already very pastel, but you might be able to tell a difference. It might also be absolutely awful at this high of a CFG, but we'll see. Well, also I'm on DPM too. Uh, with photos, it seems like uh, DPM++2 works best for Fidelity. Yeah, you can see, see this kind of gave it like a vintage, sort of soft kind of look, um, which is nice if you're looking for more of that style. Also, if I go up here to analog style, which is what you use to call the photography model into your prompt, if you put it in brackets, then it is stronger. So let's try it with that as well. I've been able to get some pretty high quality results. I do recommend adding uh, film grain, the words film grain. Oh yeah, that, that threw it off quite a bit. I do recommend adding film grain um, because otherwise the glossiness makes it look a bit photoshopped. Uh, it's much more natural if you add a bit of grain. Yeah, so it's, it's okay with the style plus the concept. I wouldn't say it's as thrilling for me, so I probably won't use it, but it is, uh, it's interesting, you know. It's also really cool when you use something totally different, like there's a marbling concept that is acrylic pour paintings, abstract paintings, and you can load that concept in while using a pretty high initial image setting so that it, it retains your image, and it will just kind of like make the abstract pour into the rest of it. Actually, I think I have one of those here. So, uh, the last thing I'll say here is this is that marbling style I was telling you about with a photograph oh, with so that great. test too. So you can see you can mix it in. Um, the embedding uh, embeddings are very powerful. Oh, that's not a good look. There we go. <laughs> all right. I think that's yeah. about all I've got. Thank uh, you so much yeah. for having me on. I really appreciate it.